ladies and gentlemen i have found myself in kvk once again and at the time of recording this we have our first pass opening in about 48 hours and that pass opening is going to include a bunch of fighting so today i'm gonna do what i always do for every kvk and i'm gonna be sharing with you guys my five strongest armies here in rise of kingdoms which means we're gonna be going over the commander pairs we're gonna be going over their equipment my armament choices i'm gonna share with you guys the talent builds for these armies as well which i I do hope that some of you pay attention to because that is very important I think it might make the difference with my Guan Yu uh, we'll talk about that later and then later in the video I'm going to be sharing with you guys my future plans for my account what am I saving my legendary commander sculptures for am I going to be maxing Ragnar Prime because he will come out in the next couple of days during my KBK so what are my plans for that and what am I saving sculptures for all of that we'll talk about in this video but first what's going on guys cheers now for this video I'm going to be doing things a little bit different than I've done in the past we're going to be starting with the army that I think is going to probably perform the worst and we're going to go all the way up to the army that I expect to perform the best and then later of course I can check back on this and see if my predictions were right and that'll help you understand my future investment plans later in this video so the first army that we're going to go over here for my account is actually my Huo with my William now this is an army that I always say that I'm going to use in KVK and then at some point I always end up swapping my William for Joan with Huo it just always happens every single time I'm going to give this a try probably for the last time and if this doesn't work then that's it I'm never running Huo William again I'll explain what my plans will be if this doesn't work later in the video but this I expect to be my worst performing army particularly for two reasons first of all my better gear is on my other cavalry army and that's a little foreshadowing I have two cavalry armies as you guys know and the second reason is that I think William is the weakest link of all my commanders and it's pretty much like not even close I think William is the most outdated he still performs well but his damage factor is definitely very low he only hits three targets his AoE is a weird shape and really he has a ton of attack here on his kit and really just no defense or health or anything that gives him some level of tankiness besides this like temporary defense bonus so at the end of the day William I think is my weakest link and Huo honestly is quite strong I really like how Huo performs I have no problems with Huo I know a lot of people look at his kit and say oh well he doesn't have health and this and that uh, I think he has so much attack and so much defense that really his stat distribution is incredible he hits one target really really hard I like Huo a lot. I like his expertise. I think he's a great commander. So I don't have any sort of issues with Huo specifically. I just think that William is the uh, kind of problem with this lineup. If we take a look at how my gear looks for my second cavalry army, you could see that there is no real iconic progress here. There's just iconic crystals and everything except for the helmet and gloves. But of course, we do have legendary everything. And this it has not always been the case for my second cavalry army so now we finally have all legendary everything for calves which is nice it's a good set of gear to have as my worst cavalry gear right like it's it's solid we have of course the ring of doom here and we have the Morris web this is an outdated piece obviously I would not recommend people invest in Morris web these days but I did get it a long long time ago and I figured it is best used on a cavalry army because your cavalry will be your fastest army and so this is you know you're most likely to be able to catch up to things slow them down here with the March speed debuff and you know I might as well use it because it's a legendary piece that I have taking a look at the armaments here of course we are running the wedge formation five percent more skill damage that's going to be the case for all of my armies except for one and of course you already kind of know what that is here we have 6.6 percent .6 attack 3.8 percent defense 5.6 percent health these are all for calves and then we have a nice 3.6 percent all damage now for those of you that don't know I typically value all damage at about 2.5 x what I would normally value a stat at that's kind of how I look at all damage you could you could do it 3x you could do it 2x it depends on the commanders that we're talking about but just to keep it simple I usually do it at about 2.5 if you don't think that's fair I would say maybe 2.2 but I wouldn't typically go much lower than that I think all damage is very very valuable so 
I'm very happy to have that much on my Huo, especially for a commander that hits so freaking hard. Here we have Calm. So anytime I use an active skill, I have a 30% chance to gain 10% attack for three seconds. It's okay. The next inscription is Pulverize. Whenever I launch a basic attack, I have a 10% chance to gain 20% bonus to all types of normal damage for one second. Again, nothing great, but this is my second cavalry set for armaments. Here we have guarded whenever I take any type of skill damage. There's a 10% chance to reduce it by 20%. That's pretty nice. A little bit tanky there, but all in all, this is again my second cavalry set for my armaments finally let's take a look at my talent build this is the go-to for all cavalry open field talent builds I don't think anybody really does anything other than this as far as I can tell if there's the skill tree and the cavalry tree this is pretty much what you run you grab the feral nature of course so you can try to pop your active skills before your enemy then you grab emblazoned shield to get that 12 percent less skill damage that's insane and you grab undying fury for the extra rage your last three points go into halberd and that's really nice to hurt the archers out in the field that's pretty much it this is tried and true and you don't really have to think too hard about this my next army is the army that i think will perform second worst which is unfortunately another cavalry army here and that is my nevsky with joan i think that this is you know this i said this is second worst i think this one and the next army we talk about will be pretty close but for whatever reason i just feel like my calves have not been performing lately even though everything on these commanders kits have not changed it's just i don't know what it is it just feels very infantry heavy in the open field these days and of course infantry counter cavalry i think that is really what it is there's just such good infantry out there and cavalry haven't gotten anything super insane in the last like year or so and even Huo himself was kind of just like a vanilla beat stick that's kind of how i look at him so really at the end of the day this is what i expect to be my second worst performing march this is my nevsky joan i again always say that I'm going to run Nevsky Joan and then inevitably I always end up switching the Nevsky and the William or sorry I always end up switching the Joan and the William as secondaries and especially later into KBK when I'm running lower on troops I kind of just want all my firepower in the Huo Joan March but we're going to run this one more time and see how it goes you know a lot of people stand by this army and I try it every single time we'll see how it goes I might change it I might not we'll have to wait and see when we take a look at the equipment here for my Nevsky a couple of upgrades since the last KBK actually I think really it's just the Sacred Dominion and then I moved the weapon my other weapon to the other one that's pretty much it we have a slight upgrade into Ash of the Dawn's iconic tier other than that I don't spend too much time investing in my cavalry gear here I have a special talent on the helmet which is really nice but besides that again most of my materials tend to go into my infantry armies because I do focus more on my two infantry armies than anything else so this is my best set of cav gear I think it's completely fine I see no issues with it honestly I think it's pretty good but is it the best in the world absolutely not let's take a look at the armaments here and this is where I've made a nice little improvement for my calves at least my main cav army we do now officially have hunter on my best cavalry set here i just had this lying around didn't know what to do with it slapped it on here and we're good to go we have four percent cav attack 8.2 percent cav defense 7.2 percent cavalry health and 1.8 percent all damage so more stats but less all damage and better inscriptions for sure than my other cavalry armaments i like how this came out we also have two rare inscriptions here so really stacked the deck for this cavalry armaments we have boiling blood which is another two percent boost to skill damage and whenever i deal damage to the target their troop has a 30 percent chance to reduce all incoming skill damage by five percent for the next three seconds five second cooldown love boiling blood it is kind of like a poor man's hunter almost except it's a more of a damage and tankiness whereas hunter is all damage taking a look at defiant this just increases normal damage resistance by three percent this makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of like i said infantry in the field right now and of course we have william wallace and liu che dealing so much normal damage now there is an argument to be made here that hunter belongs on huo because huo hits harder with his single target hit which makes the direct damage increase by 10%. That's more meaningful on Huo. I might do that, but really, I just like how the distribution of the stats falls when I have these all together. So I'll tweak that maybe, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's 2300 versus 2700. Yes, is it technically better on Huo for sure? Is it going to move the needle a ton? Not really. And I do want to see my Nevsky Joan perform as best as possible. So these are the armaments that we're running on there. And again, if I do end up going with the Huo Joan, I will move my better armaments to my Huo. And then, of course, he'll be popping off with the Hunter. So we'll see how that goes. Taking a look at the talent build here, there is nothing interesting. It is identical to my talent build over on my Huo. Like I said, this is 
pretty much confirmed best talent build for cavalry skill damage commanders in the open field it's kind of an open and shut case as far as i'm concerned so that's that and that is it for my two cavalry armies the two armies that i think unfortunately will probably perform the worst next up is my first infantry army we're going to talk about and that is guan cpo yes ladies and gentlemen 2024 end of 2024 still rocking guan cpo and i am not ashamed to admit it and i think maybe if you take a look at my talent build maybe it will help you guys because i think that i run a slightly different build than everybody else and everyone else is was ready to give up on guan two years ago and i've still been rocking guan cpo and i've con constantly said guan cpo is one of the best open field marches in the game i still think that is true that might change with ragnar prime and we'll talk about that later but i'm not ashamed to admit that i'm running this i think this pair is underrated honestly even though it's been so popular and i think it performs super well you have obviously the double aoe on both Guan Yu and CPO you have an AoE which is insane nice stat distribution we obviously have a relic for Guan Yu which is non-negotiable if you're going to run Guan Yu it seems I know people saw this relic came out and kind of laughed at it said it's really nothing but honestly it's not I think the 10% defense is nice for Guan Yu he had no tanky stats at all so getting 10% defense really did it did help him I think at least I sort of felt it a little bit he performed well in my last KVK so I think this is a really solid relic for him especially when we get a second upgrade but we'll talk more about that in a little bit regardless guan cpo tried and true let's take a look at the gear that i have for this if we look at you know how i expect my my marches to perform i think this is going to take the bronze medal anyway this is my second set of infantry gear of course my best gear is saved for my best army for infantry but we have a iconic rank three shield of the eternal empire we also grabbed finally the iconic tier five for sturdy boots of the eternal empire and this is so nice okay because now we have fleeted footmen which gives me another five percent march speed outside of territory which i mean is it expensive yes this is very expensive but for infantry I am just all in on stacking March speed I want them to be as fast as they can be because they are the slowest troop type so we have the four piece set bonus plus we have as much March speed as I can get out of those 30 boots of course I do have to now start putting a you know a special talent on there that's gonna be the next project besides that we have a tier two for eternal Knights we have nice ring of doom here we have a special talent on the ring of doom and it is iconic tier two really nice stuff there I'm really happy that I got that I just crafted it like that I didn't have to work for it which I got super lucky for same thing with my hope cloak you guys know that if you've been watching the channel for a while but this is my second best set of infantry equipment and it's going to hopefully do my Guan Yu some justice taking a look at the formation once again wedge formation and you see our second set of hunter boiling blood combo showing up here these are really great inscriptions to have hunter you get from winning kvks boiling blood you get if you're lucky okay we have 4.2 percent infantry attack 8.8 percent infantry defense 8% infantry health and 2.2% infantry march speed. Now, I wish there was more all damage here, but honestly, the distribution of stats skewed heavily towards the tanky stats are amazing. Plus, we have a ton of damage with Hunter and Boiling Blood. And we have Eclipse, which means you take less skill damage. And Hardy gives me another 3.5% of health. So I love the stat distribution on this set of armaments. I really don't think I can change anything. There's just some small micro optimizations I do need to make but I really like how this came out. So I am happy with that. Taking a look at the talent build. This is where I think my Guan Yu differs from other people. And maybe this is why my Guan Yu is, is like, I'm experiencing good performance with my Guan Yu and other people aren't. I don't know why I grab feral nature. And then I put all my points into March speed over here. Like we grab March speed here. We grab March speed here. We grab March speed here. And then we put one point in health, three points in health here. And I completely skip hold the line. I think everyone uses hold the line on Guan Yu and uh, I mean you know if you're running infantry and you don't go all in on the blue tree then you might grab hold the line it's a great talent but here's my problem with hold the line you do get a nice damage taken reduction but it's only when you are hit with a basic attack and so when I think about you know the number of basic attacks that I'm dealing versus the number of basic attacks that I'm ideally taking I want to not be taking basic attacks okay especially with my Guan Yu so a lot of times the way that I fight in the open field and the way that I think a lot of people fight is you play in dot mode and you control all of your armies all at once and you have them target all the same target and you go in and out of combat and as you kind of get pulled into the enemy ball then you sort of retreat a little bit that way you don't get targeted too much 
and that's that now when you play like that it seems to me depending on the position of your troops but typically the armies for me that get the targeted the most are the ones that are out of place so that's usually my cavalry because they have higher march speed and it's usually my one archer march right which we'll talk about in a minute because people target archers right it just is what it is and so you know from a player psychology perspective my infantry are less likely to be intentionally targeted by players who can see my troop type and it's also less likely to be targeted from a march speed positioning perspective because most likely the ones out of place are going to be my cavalry and so in the grand scheme of things you know I feel like my infantry are going to be taking less normal attacks than most of my other armies out in the field and so if that's the case if I'm playing in such a way where I'm intentionally minimizing the number of normal attacks that I'm taking well then I'm also minimizing the number of times I'm going to get hold the line and if that's the case I'd rather just take the march speed to be honest with you I'd rather just be faster on the battlefield that lets me go in and out of combat more it lets me retreat faster if I have to it lets me chase things down if I can right and it makes my Guan Yu faster than other Guan Yu's on the field so I really like this talent build I've been using it I have two extra points here I throw it in defense but really you could put it wherever you want I just don't know where else you would put it right there's like nowhere else to put it you're not going to put it in the con like there's just nothing you could do here right you might as well get the two points of defense here but regardless this is how I run my Guan Yu you can argue with me in the comment section below if you want but I have found this to be tremendously effective I love stacking March speed on Guan it just has worked for me and I mean I'm always saying how good my Guan CPO is doing and if you're not experiencing that then maybe Maybe try moving a couple of these talents around get the relic on Guan Yu and maybe you'll have a different experience but that is just how I've been running it it is what it is now the next army we're going to talk about is one that I suspect will be my second best performing March on the field and that is none other than my Zhui Liang with Herman Prime this is of course a tried and true for the last year ever since Herman Prime came out this has been pretty much well regarded as the single best Archer March in the game and I have been extremely happy with these commander investments I think that this performs super well, not just on paper, but it performs super well in the battlefield. The fact that Zhuge Liang does not have March speed is the only downside to this March. Other than that, it is insane the amount of damage it outputs. It is insane the stat distribution that it has. And it is insane that not only is it high damage and decent tankiness, but you also have the debuffs on Zhuge Liang and the debuffs on Harmon Prime's active skill it's incredible this is an incredible march and i love this so much despite archers being targeted so much in the open field i still find that this march performs so so well this being my only archer march does allow me to sort of put as much emphasis as i want to into the equipment and you're going to see a very bizarre set of equipment here for my Zhuge Liang Herman it is not optimal and that's because I started building this set before leadership equipment came into the game and I already had really nice boots and I already had the talents on the chest and the gloves so at that point it's like what am I going to do do I go all in on the six piece set or do I start to build the kvk helmet with leadership legs in hopes that later down the line i will build possibly a second archer march and then i can move some of these pieces over there and have a fun, like a single optimal build that's kind of what i went for at the end of the day i made a video talking about the best archer gear in the game and i used a bunch of different statistics to prove that and at the end of the day all of the best archer potential sets of gear were very close to one another in performance you're talking micro optimizations a few percentage points in your trade difference really some of it might even just be rounding error and you know it's it's almost negligible so I'm not super worried about this being the best possible set in the game it is close enough to where I'm not really even going to notice that it is not technically the best set in the game but regardless we have iconic tier two for the chest of course with the special talent is very very nice here we have a special talent on the gloves but only iconic tier one I did grab the ancestral mask of night from my last kvk shop and I crafted this put an iconic crystal into it I really really love the amount of uh, archer attack you get here which is beautiful we did go and grab the dragon's breath boots iconic tier five so we get all the march speed possible for our Zhuge Liang this is the way that I want him to move on the battlefield I want him to be as fast as he can be because he will be targeted and so you know getting away from that is crucial so more march speed outside of territory is good even though tier five boots are extremely expensive it does mean a lot to me of course we also have the leadership legs so we have some more health and you get a little bit of extra march speed here which i find is very very nice also i have the ring of doom and the horn of fury 
this is tried and true and i don't know if i mentioned that too much with my guan Cibio, but i run ring and horn on pretty much everything that is you know a skill-based commander so we'll talk about that in just a second but at the end of the day this is my only archer set i just crafted these with the special talent i just got lucky so i haven't really in invested that much into this set beyond that other than the kvk helmet and getting tier 5 boots other than that it's just been really nice i'm on the fence about if i put an iconic crystal here or not because i don't know if I'm eventually going to build a second archer set and if I do then I'd rather just craft the kvk weapon and put the crystal there so we'll see how that goes it's archer base attack so it's not like the end of the world if I don't have that so it, you know it is what it is moving on to the armaments here this is I think I did slight improvements here possibly I don't remember what I I've done since my last kvk but we have 11.3 percent archer attack 10.9 percent archer defense and unfortunately 1.7 percent archer health but 3.4 percent archer all damage or really just all damage in general i love the the spread here i i know i really wish there was more health but honestly having all the health on Juge Leong does help a ton so i think i can make that sacrifice to guarantee massive damage massive damage i love it if we look at the inscriptions we have furious that says whenever i deal whenever i use an active skill i have an eight percent bonus to all types of skill damage dealt and a three percent bonus to all types of counter attack damage dealt for three seconds so furious very very nice inscription here respite whenever i'm hit with any basic attack i have a 10 percent chance to take 10 percent less damage for two seconds a little bit tanky there assertive two percent more damage amazing right amazing and rapacious 1.5 percent extra damage incredible right so really we have another three and a half percent all damage on the map which means we have 6.9 percent all damage nice finally taking a look at the talent build here for my Zhu Liang, we grab feral nature of course and then we grab venomous sting for eight percent more skill damage that's very good for this pair both of them dealing so much skill damage we grab razor sharp for extra rage here and then we come over and we have one point well we have two points left over we grab you know the attack here and full quiver there might be an argument to be made about running something like this and just completely skipping razor sharp and the only reason for that is because my Zhu Liang is expertise and so you do get that extra 30 rage here but I just haven't really done a deep dive into that to see if you need a razor sharp or not it's possible I think if it is the case then it will be a micro optimization to swap that out I I'm not really sure just yet but this is what I've run for the past few kvks and it's done just fine for me so I'm not super worried about that maybe that's a topic for a future video if you want to see the impact of the expertise on Juhi Leong on you know the rage cycle let me know in the comments section below and my final army that I'm going to be running here in this KVK is my Liu Che with my William Wallace now here's the thing when William Wallace came out during my last KVK I ran him a little bit found that he performed as good if not slightly worse than my Alex so I benched him because Alex is just faster that's just how you know that was my anecdotal experience and it was King's Land and I was not willing to experiment with a new commander that much uh, I, I found you know Liu Che Alex was consistent very strong best performing watch my last KVK I didn't want to keep experimenting in King's Land where it mattered the most that KVK was extremely close if you didn't see it we really were on the back foot for the entirety of King's Land and pulled out a victory at the very like at the last hour right it was like Monday morning or something like that 6 a.m so very close King's Land I did not want to run a suboptimal experimental March so that was that my anecdotal experience didn't love William Wallace over Alex but this KVK I will be giving him another try now I will probably do William Wallace primary because of course the smite tree but I really like casting the five target AOE with Liu Che right I just love that it will cast first to me it's very important that your AOE goes first which is unfortunate for my cavalry marches because they have the single target hit first I don't know we'll see I know people kind of debate this a lot of the Krakens in the game love William Wallace primary Liu Che secondary they swear by it I'm not a Kraken so I think that I probably will still prefer Alex because of his ease of use but I do think that it is you know worth giving William Wallace another try I have him expertise so I might as well right so I'm probably going to do William Wallace primary Liu Che secondary the reason that I have a setup like this is because I have my gear on Liu Che for Lost Canyon and all that stuff so I didn't want to move it yet until fighting actually happened but that's what I'm going to be running let's go ahead and claim all these real quick while we're filming because I'm such a professional youtuber this army like I said I suspect will perform better than anything and if I discover my William Wallace Luce is not performing as well as I think I will bench the William Wallace once again for the Alexander the Great I hope I don't have to do that but we'll, we'll wait and see 
this is the current gear that I'm running on this army and this is definitely my best set of gear as you can see we have iconic tier three for the hammer of Sun and Moon I'll probably get this to iconic tier four before I start working on the special talent I don't I mean furious strike is such a small micro optimization that it's just too expensive to me so I'll probably get this to iconic tier four before I start putting my extra blueprints into it to get that you know basically the bonus to stats and to everything else here we also have iconic tier three for the hope cloak with the talent we have iconic tier four for the special talented eternal knight which is really nice again wily very sort of it seems like a micro optimization so I kind of stopped there but also I don't think I have any more blueprints of this so that might be partially why I did grab the iconic tier five she was return with the special talent so this is very very nice here and then of course we have the greatest glory which is amazing for any smite damage army and we have concealed dagger which I just happen to have it right I had it from a long time ago and it turns out that the expertise on Liu Che does cause you to possibly proc this more and so I might as well use it and the best person that I could use it on is Liu Che and also a health debuff is still very very nice here so this is my current best set of gear I don't know what I'm going to do with this helmet I kind of want the KVK helmet because really I mean it just doesn't really matter right because I, I have the gloves and if I remove this for the KVK helmet then I lose the three percent troop defense to gain it back in the form of the stats here it just I don't know it doesn't really seem like it's that much of a priority for me so this is what I'm running right now I am totally happy with this I think it is perfectly fine taking a look at the armaments we are running the arch formation of course this gives us five percent more normal damage which is amazing for Liu Che and for William Wallace as well if we look at the stat breakdown we have a whopping 13.2 percent attack five percent defense and 9.6 percent health so unfortunately no all damage no march speed but if we look at the inscriptions we have one percent all damage from valiant one percent all damage from fearsome 2.5 percent more counterattack damage from alert we have two percent all damage when i'm over 50 percent units remaining from cohesive which is most of the time and that's also when you deal most of your damage and then we have smite which gives you two percent more normal damage which is kind of like two percent more all damage because it works for the active skills on this pair and it works for normal damage so really the way that i look at it is i kind of have like six percent all damage for the most part and another two and a half percent counter attack really i do have a lot of all damage here it's just hidden in the inscriptions so all in all i really really like this formation the armaments here it's it's great and the march speed combination between either Liu Che and William Wallace or Liu Che and Alexander the Great who's even faster I really like this a ton so let's go into the talents here if I run Liu Che as the primary which again I'm expecting to run William Wallace but if I run Liu Che as primary this is what I'm going to be doing okay I grabbed effortless I grabbed fight to the death and I grabbed martial mastery then we grab all the march speed over here on the right side of the infantry tree and there's still enough points to grab hold the line which is incredible so this is such a great talent build I love this a lot you you don't have to do the trade-off like you do with the skill tree of hold the line versus march speed you can just get it all which is beautiful and you get so much extra damage from the attack tree as well which is nice if I run the William Wallace primary which I do expect to do this will be the talent build that I run I just go all in on the smite tree grab thunderous smite all my points go to that then we come over here and we do the same thing that we do for our Guan Yu we grab the March speed over here and we grab the health from strong of body and we get the two percent extra defense here one percent health off on the side and you're good to go I think this is probably the way to go just like with Guan Yu I know people like hold the line but functionally I I don't know how much it moves the needle again I could be wrong here but like you'd have to take away some serious points from your smite tree to get that or you have to sacrifice the March speed and I am not willing to do that I don't know if it's the fact that people are like criminally undervaluing March speed or I don't really know what it is but this is the build that I intend to use for my William Wallace and that brings us to what is next for Omniarch's account in Rise of Kingdoms because we know at the time of recording this it might even be on the day the pass opens that we get Ragnar Prime in the game and Ragnar Prime you know you look at his kit and it's just unbelievable right this is I've made a video about it I'm almost positive with the expertise that this is the single hardest hitting active skill in the entire game whether it's the strongest based on debuffs and stuff like that you can make that determination all on your own 
but statistically like from a just straight up damage perspective like it's probably the hardest hitting active skill in the game I, I don't see an argument for a stronger one plus he's got so much defense a little bit of March speed he's got a chance to drain his enemies attack and March speed as well really really tanky here with a bonus to skill damage it's just unbelievable right Ragnar Prime is kind of a no-brainer invest for me and so you know when the event comes around I'll get him for free of course and I will put some sculptures into him we'll see how this works and I will most likely bench my Guan Yu the thing with that is that I just think the stat spread on Ragnar is probably a little bit better you do lose the silence but you gain more damage so at the end of the day I think that's a trade-off worth making he's more tanky it's just something that I think is you know and he's a debuff as well right like you know it's not like you're losing debuffs entirely you lose the silence but you gain the vampire effect here where you drain the enemy I prefer the silence effect of course but like this is still good right so at the end of the day I will be maxing Ragnar Prime I don't know if I'll max him day one because of the events that come out around him there's opportunities for me to buy bundles and of course I'm a spender so I'll probably do that but at the end of the day I will be getting Ragnar Prime as my next investment and Guan Yu will take the bench I suspect it will perform better and I will be using him for the rest of my KBK beyond that though if we take a look here I have 1610 legendary commander sculptures and that will only increase as time continues to go on and so what is my future plan for my account well clearly the biggest area of opportunity is both my Guan Yu which will be benched and my William right like I said before and so what I plan on doing is I'm planning on waiting until next month for the new commander release I suspect we'll get new commanders in December probably mid to late December and I also suspect that it will be cavalry there's no confirmation there and it could very well be ranged but I I feel like it will be cavalry and so knowing that I think that I will be saving my sculptures which I've already been doing of course 690 of them or 600 about 600 of them will go to Ragnar Prime but the other 1000 I will keep in hopes that next month we get calves and they are worth investing in okay. I didn't think Belisarius Prime was worth investing in here's my plan if in December we either don't get calves or we get calves but they're bad or or they look bad or they appear to be bad or they're lukewarm or whatever then what I will possibly do and I know this is going to sound insane right is I will either max Belisarius Prime and bench William to see if that moves the needle for the rest of my armies because the thing with with Belisarius Prime is that you know he's really built for swarming things down but at the end of the day his stat spread is better than the stat spread on William I I feel like honestly and he could just be amplifying the rest of my army with this expertise so I think it might be a very very micro optimization for benching my William for Belisarius Prime that's one route I could take but the more likely route that I take and I, I know this could this is probably gonna sound insane but if the next cavalry are bad I might just bench William and I might just alongside that bench my Nevsky and if I do that then my fifth army will possibly be another Archer March and what I'm thinking is going all in on Osher Bonapal, maxing out Osher Bonapal, and pairing him with Isongye, getting the third relic up upgrade for Isongye, and just using this as my fifth march. I would do two infantry, two archers, one cavalry, and just have massive amounts of AoE. The Osher Bonapal YSG will probably be one of my worst performing marches, but I think it'll perform better than Nevsky William or Huo William, and probably better than like Huo Belisarius as well, right? That's my expectation. Now, of course, that is an extremely expensive investment to make because I will have to start building another Archer set of gear. However, I'm already in a position where I can make some upgrades on my Archer set that I have existing, right? I can get the Archer KVK piece here, which means I will be grabbing the, or which means I'll take this Dragon Beth bow. I can put it on my other army and I can grab a couple of the revival set pieces. You know, there's a lot that I can do here to make a sort of makeshift cheaper Archer set, you know, just kind of farm AOE skill damage. That's really all I want to do with that March. I don't expect it to be like insane but I already have the YSG maxed might as well I already have two relic upgrades into him so really all I'm doing is grabbing Ashmanapal maxing him and that's it and I might go that route depending on how they deal with calves in the upcoming release with that being said the final route that I could take is just leaving everything as it is and if the opportunity presents itself this KVK I might max Gorgo the reason for this is because I feel like some of my gear is decent and I might be able to be like a B tier or C tier infantry garrison 
in a pinch when people are offline at weird hours i could fill in somewhere maybe and you know again i would be doing it with my the gear that i have on my liu Che and I would be doing it with these armaments here again is it the best garrison no definitely not definitely not uh, there's way better garrison players in my kingdom of course but I just have so many sculptures lying around and I don't know what to do with them and Gorgo already is 5515 so like I might as well grab put the other 310 sculptures in here have a decent garrison and by the way since my last kvk I have actually expertised <laughs> my where is he my constantine right i have actually through daily bundle purchases and various events i have actually expertise constantine because again i have nothing else to get for those events and at least constantine is good in canyon i mean it is what it is i mean you could look at the commanders that i have here like i don't i don't know what else to say like what else am i going to get i have already expertise a lot of these sort of commanders that I, I don't even use them but i just have them expertise because i have so many sculptures right so with that being said i could run the gorgo constantine he is expertise i do have the relic for him because of canyon so that's another route that i could take we'll have to see maybe i'll before i even consider that of course i would reach out to my uh, kingdom and ask them like hey what do you do you really think i could do this it'll depend on my crystal tech of course but that's another route that i could take my account but most likely what i think the route will be is ragnar prime comes out i bench the guan yu i run ragnar prime primary with cpo prime secondary as my second infantry march and then from there i end up just holding out to the new cav release hopefully that comes in december and hopefully one of the commanders is better than william that's all he has to do is be better than william and that's an instant max max for me and then i can keep running my two two one lineup of two infantry two cavalry one archer and that is that with that being said hopefully you found this video interesting informative entertaining whatever hopefully you got some insight as to how i've built my account over the years what i'm thinking when i'm making progress what my future plans are let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below and while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys Thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.